Hello people, and welcome back to part 64 of Begusia, the City Skylines build guide. I hope you're having a wonderful day. And we are starting today's episode in Google Maps, and uh, we're going to kind of take a look at a little bit of inspiration uh, for today's build. So, uh, I've mentioned a few times that I live in a place called the Lakeshore National Park in the northwest of England. Um, it's obviously quite a large national park. I think it's England's largest, or second largest, I think. Uh, behind the Yorkshire Dales, I'm not sure. And um, so you can tell it's obviously a very mountainous region. We have all these little lakes here. You know, it's a, it's a very beautiful area of the country. And then um, as a national park, it does have some kind of commercialized areas. And this is what I kind of want to focus on today. So there's a place in the Lake District called Bowness on Windermere. And it lies on England's largest lake, which is this one right here, uh, Lake Windermere. And then um, as we kind of zoom into it here, you'll notice that there are kind of a lot of different attractions, right? This is um this is often referred to as the Blackpool of the Lake District. <laughs> and um this isn't this is a lot of people's favourite areas because it's so busy and so popular, but likewise it's also quite an unpopular area because it is so kind of commercialised, there's lots of bars and clubs and tourist attractions here. Uh, but you know it's a, it's a touristic area, right? So uh, you kinda need these areas for it to function. So you can kind of see here we're starting in the center there's a you know there's a pub here there's lots of different kind of like tourist shops and like see if we have a little look down this street here for example there's a, a kind of a ton of like clubs and restaurants and bars down here as we kind of move down towards the lake front there's more like cafes restaurants bars tourist shops takeaways and there's a costa over here as well this video is not sponsored by Costa, if you're wondering. <laughs> um, and then as we kind of move down again, you can see more here, kind of bars and grills. So even though it is within a national park, it's not all countryside, right? So we come down here, there's um, there's like a little ferry terminal here as well. This is where you can grab a lake cruise. And then you can kind of see kind of across the lake here. Um, it looks out across kind of the wider hills and there's more mountains behind this and it goes back into that more traditional national park that you would think of when you hear the word national park. So this is kind of what I wanted to work on today. Um, there's a big hotel here as well. This is a really nice one and looks out over the lake here. So this is really what I wanted to kind of work on today. We're going to head over to the national park. We're going to go by the lake and then we're going to kind of build a, a nice tourist hotspot for the national park to have. And uh, yeah, hopefully you can kind of see how it fits, all the areas around it. You can see that mountain we were looking at is one of our clave heights. It's a little walk you can do. And uh, yeah, you can kind of see how this fits into this vast, empty countryside that surrounds it. It's kind of almost like a little mini city uh, in and amongst all this. So we'll dive into Begusia and uh, see how we can replicate this idea. All right, guys. So we are back in Begusia. And uh, we had a really good name suggestion for the new uh, industrial park over here. I'm going to change it up now. So thank you for the suggestion. I'll uh, pop the comment up on screen now. Really appreciate you guys getting involved naming the areas. And uh, obviously this is named after the kind of, um, you know, the Twin Rocks Bridge here. And uh, yeah, you guys really enjoy this episode. Thanks for all the support on it. Uh, really, you know, it's nice to know that you guys are still enjoying the series this far into it. Uh, just another couple of additions. I've started to expand the suburb around the uh, green farmland town. So we can see now uh, how this is going to be surrounded by all the green city housing. And I played with a couple of ideas here, but ended up deleting it because it looked awful. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, this area is coming along uh, nicely, slowly. So, where we're building today is we're going to follow the river all the way along here. You can see we kind of have this big lake front in here, right? And uh, <laughs> this is currently the effort of a lakeside town. <laughs> this looks really bad, this is so awful. Um, so we need to do some terraforming here if we kind of have a look at the landscape. It's going to be very unfriendly for what we want to work with. Uh, so we're going to kind of cut away a little bit of these cliff sides, make it a little smoother and more friendly for kind of some tourist stuff to lie in here. And uh, sort out a road connection uh, that isn't just a dirt road, uh, kind of from the, the highway over here. And uh, we may add the train station in here, I'm not sure. We do have one over here, so it's probably not super crucial. Uh, to have one here again. I don't know, we'll see. But I'm going to go ahead and tidy all this up and then we'll be right back. Alright guys, so the old town has gone and uh, we've got a fairly substantial kind of space to play with here. 
Uh, but before we do start playing with it, we want to make sure... It looks like I've broken the power line up to the observatory. Don't worry, we'll put that back up in a moment. Um, so the first thing we want to do is kind of terraform the space we want to work with here. Uh, we don't just want to kind of go in and build on this terrain because it can end up looking very messy very quickly. Uh, so I'm going to kind of terraform uh, the space that I want. So just using the level terrain tool, we're going to right click and then we're just going to kind of create a little bit of a flat border uh, against the lake. And then we can do some things with dirt roads to help our keys fit in a little better too. Yeah, so we'll do that as well. So I'm just going to keep using... Uh, the keyboard to kind of help flatten this area out going up and down so there is kind of a natural curve in the lake here so we want to make sure that those water keys are going to um, fit in kind of as smoothly as possible and then what we can do is we'll just up our brush size I've actually had a couple of people ask recently uh, this is the better landscaping mod for PC that gives you the uh, the tree brush and then um, the the landscaping tools makes it a little easier to terraform Okay, so I'm going to grab my dirt road tool, uh, if that was a dirt road, not a dirt path, there we go. I suppose you could use a path as well, actually. Um, so I'm just going to kind of draw in some areas, some very straight roads up along the beach here. And then what we'll use these for are kind of cliff guidelines to cut our lake away. And then we can bring one road up along here like that. And I think this is probably the furthest we'll take it, maybe one here. Yeah, we'll probably bring the key up to here. We need to do something with this little cliffside here because we have kind of the border with the rail. It's just a little bit roller coaster at the minute if you look at this. <laughs> need to smoothen this out as well. We'll do that today. Okay, so I've got kind of my three main straight bits here, right? So now we're gonna we're gonna hook these up with our freeform road tool and the straight road. So bring it a little bit closer together. And then if we grab our freeform, we can just get a much smoother curve in here as well. And then we'll do the same with this one as well. So right now we've kind of got our three straight pieces, right? This is where we want our, our waterfront to sit. Uh, we do also want to have a little space for a ferry terminal as well. So let's plan that and let's terraform that. You know, we're kind of taking inspiration from Boness here. There is like a very, a very tiny peninsula that kind of just, just jerks out. Probably no much bigger than this is going to be ideal, I would think. Probably something like that. Let's kind of see what kind of room we're saving here. Maybe make it a little wider, a little deeper. Okay, yeah. And then we can have a, our ferry terminal here as well, where ferries are going to drop people off. Uh, okay, and then we can do the same thing with the roads here as well. Let's um, let's kind of draw this out. Okay, so we'll have it come out in a square. Come over a little bit further with this one as well. Let's delete this, and then we should be able to come straight back in. And that's going to give us kind of a perfect rectangle. And then we can terraform around this now as well. So then we're going to come into our terraforming tools again. We're going to grab the slope terrain tool. And then we want to right click kind of where we want to start the slope from. And then we're going to push the slope just up to the edge of this dirt road that we've placed in. Let's kind of do it in stages. Let's take your time. If you mess it up, you can always kind of undo it. And then try again. So just make a little bit of a kind of, again, a shelf in the, in the lake like we did with the industrial estate last episode. And then we're just going to push our terraforming back up against all these roads that we've just placed in. So this is kind of really helpful um, with placing. So I need to delete this as well. And then we can uh, just kind of smoothen this shore out here as well. So yeah, the keys are always a little bit difficult in City Skylands without key anarchy. So this is just a nice way of, um, of getting them to fit in a little, a little nicer, a little smoother. And then uh, I'll, I'll tidy this up as well off camera, don't worry. We will uh, make this a little more appealing so it's not quite as harsh. Okay, dirt roads are in in the shape that I want to place my keys. So now we can go ahead and delete them all. Now you will think, well, that's just destroying all the terraform we've just done. But what it's done is it's lined the shoreline up into the pattern that we want it. And now we'll have a much easier time placing our keys in. So we'll come ahead, grab our water key. 
And we started from probably say about here, right? And then we'll have one straight piece in right there. Probably one right here as well. So we'll have one straight piece right there. Right there as well. And then probably bring this one with this side actually a touch further over. And then we switch to our freeform, pop our road guideline back on. And then we just snap into that and we'll get a much smoother kind of curve in the key, right? So placing those dirt roads, it just kind of helps you terraform against the land that you want to you want to kind of work with. Alright, so we've got a little kind of lake front in here right now. And I'm fairly happy with this kind of shape that we've got going on. Should be able to get some nice things in here as well. We've also got the tourist stuff to use too that we've yet to kind of uh, use some of the unique buildings for. So we do want a ferry stop on here and uh, I think we'll probably have it at an angle because the the one in Windermere does. So probably here. Because I think it would be nice to kind of see the ferries pulling up and then turning around right in front. Alright, so we'll start to place our roads in. And uh, I think I'm going to use the two lane with grass. And that we're just going to snap to the road guideline here just so we can kind of line up perfectly with our keys. So I'm going to kind of, obviously we can't draw here because we're intercepting with the key. So but we can draw here. But this is a little bit too close. I want um, a little bit of room to kind of save myself some decoration space later on. So I'm probably going to put one tile between the road and the key. You know, we can do paths through there or kind of whatever the hell else we want to. And then I guess we'll just begin to, to kind of draw this in. So we can kind of come up to here as well. Do the same thing on this side. Just kind of come at it from this angle. So I'm not really sure what I want to transition to this space here. We may just make it more National Park. Put some kind of like these assets over here. It's like a little camping ground. Probably do something with that. So we're going around to the tight bit of the key. You just get a nice curve road in here. And then we'll need to decide actually how we want this area to hook in. Let's turn off our road guideline, let's go for the angle. And then we'll come straight up here. We may delete this. This is kind of something that comes with the map. We'll probably find a maybe a walking tour around it or something or use the more beautification mod to get it in. We also have to do something with this island as well. And this kind of spawns in with a lot of natural looking uh, detailed assets like this old ruined castle here. There's like an old cemetery. And I think we'll kind of keep this in. Maybe turn it into a walking tour. I guess we'll kind of see. Let me know what you guys think we should do with this island. Because it's, it's pretty significant just to kind of leave by itself like this. So we'll probably do something with it. Okay, let's start looking at hooking this thing into the existing road network around here. So I think kind of having the main road fall out from this point is going to give us lots of nice even tiling. Uh, which is, is of course something that we always appreciate on the build guide. And then let's begin to kind of factor in a bit of road network here. So we want to smoothen this terrain out a touch. It's a little bit kind of gnarly for what we want right now. There we go. It shouldn't be too steep, I don't think. Kind of cut a little bit of a ways out of it here. Make a bit of a smoother ramp for the road. Kind of up here as well. Okay. So it's actually hooking the road behind the cemetery. And again, just using that little freeform tip, just bringing them almost together. And then together with the freeform tool, we'll, uh, we'll have a much smoother curve and much nicer time. Okay, so for right now, we just delete that old two-way highway road because we really need to do some work with kind of the road infrastructure around here. Uh, we do have this little kind of bridge slip interchange that works to a decent effect. I guess it's got two little feeder roads. And you can kind of switch over. There's people actually get using this to uh, get to and from the downtown, which is uh, which is really good. It's good to see this getting some use anyway. Uh, okay, so we have this right now. So kind of big important building. If we come into our uh, nightlife stuff, we have the casino here. So it's a unique building. Obviously provides a ton of entertainment and a lot of noise pollution as well. And uh, I think definitely this deserves to be kind of right up alongside the waterfront here. Super impressive building. Pretty nice looking asset too. 
and then we can do some things around the back of it as well to help it blend in a little more. But yeah, overall, kind of as a nice, impressive uh, waterfront building, the casino uh, should work quite nicely. So there's also a couple more things we get to use as well, like we have the driving range, maybe let's get this in here as well, maybe push this a bit further back. Uh, also the fantastic fountain <laughs> and the zoo before we had a... Uh, before we had part life, this was this was the zoo. <laughs> so it's a uh, it's pretty underwhelming compared to the part life stuff, right? We can probably get this in here as well. Uh, we'll find a, we'll find a place for it alongside the fountain that we have to use as well. Uh, okay, so paint out our district, lilac district, <laughs> so close to the late district. <laughs> it's pretty weird. If anyone wants to name the district um, or the area, please feel free to throw it down in the comments below and we'll see what we can do. Uh, so of course we want to apply leisure specialization to this as well. And uh, We may make an area for hotels, although the hotel assets in kind of cities are a little bit horrible. I'm not biggest fan of them. Uh, okay, so I think what we'll do is, is we'll kind of work in the fantastic fountain around here somewhere as well. So let's maybe generate... Okay, so we can't quite centralise it just because it's uh, it's kind of like an even number of blocks each side. So it's not going to be super central, but you can't really tell that much. And I think once it's surrounded by zoning, uh, we'll be able to do, okay, we'll kind of throw off the off-centre thing a little bit more. Uh, so obviously there's way too many traffic lights through here. We'll, uh, we'll run through and turn everything off. And uh, begin to carry on planning out our road network here. So we'll definitely have a road that comes directly behind the the casino like this. Again, I want to kind of keep these smooth angles flowing as much as possible throughout the area. Just like that. So with this space here, we obviously have a little room for some kind of commercial stuff. I think we'll just go for a big batch of commercial alongside the casino with the tourism buildings. I'm not too bothered about waiting to do very specific zoning sizes. Um, I just want it to kind of come in at lots of different shapes and sizes. So if we run one of the amusement park paths up on either side we should be able to create something of a little pattern. So we'll just carry on bringing our road out here as well. Probably up to there seems like a sensible option. So I have a couple of different layers to this thing as well. Uh, we may even include a little bit of residential too. Because there are some houses kind of nearby to bonus is what we're kind of taking the inspiration from today. Looks like we need to move that over a little bit actually. Because it's um it's not perfectly in line with the grid. It looks like it's just in the middle of the adjacent one. So we'll Pull that up to the top as well. Okay. So we could also run a path through here as well, right? Let's see how this would look if we did kind of a path between the road and the key. Let's bring it up for a little bit. Now I'm just wondering, are we going to go to overkill with the palm trees here? But I think it would be nice to be a little bit overkill, you know? Because, um, you know, but bonuses, it's very kind of, it's very tourist kind of, um, I don't know what the word is that I'm looking for. Almost kind of there to please the tourists, right? Okay, and then I think what we'll do is we'll carry on running that little path detail around the fountain as well. So if we come in here, now even though these paths are kind of right up alongside the like the pavements and the sidewalks might seem like a little bit of a waste uh, a bit of a waste of space but um, they will still use them and it's kind of a nice border for the roads as well if they're kind of surrounded by these trees and we'll begin to see kind of a really uh, nice impressive I guess kind of tourist area is, uh, is the phrase right uh, let me know as well guys if you've ever visited the Lake District I'll be really interested to know kind of how many of you have travelled here uh, okay, so there's kind of a four tile gap. I don't think we'll link it down this side. 
Maybe we'll bring it out here a little bit and kind of work with some of these odd shaped zonings we've got. Uh, do a little bit of part life detailing in here to kind of fill out some of these areas, make like some little open food courts. Could maybe even come into part life and maybe grab like. So there is like a lot of public restrooms around in Bowness. Which you also have to pay like 40 pence to use. So maybe get one in there like that, right? The commercial is taking a very long time to come in. We do have a tiny bit of commercial demand. So it should be coming in at some point. Let's begin to map out the rest of these things as well. Looks like we have some ore here. Is it ore? Yeah, there's a massive ore deposit in this thing over here. There's a big one over here as well. That is interesting. Let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing um, an ore build in the National Park. Because again, actually similar to the Lake District, um, we have some really big slate mines. I'll tell you what, I'm actually going to show that off right now. Uh, let me know what you guys think of it. Bear with me. Alright guys, so tiny little detour away from the episode, uh, just as a little discussion for next episode. Um, so again, kind of coming back to the point that a national park isn't just trees and forests and camping tents. There is a, a wide range of things that make a national park what it is. Uh, so obviously we have that ore over in Baguzio, and you can kind of see here that... Um, there's a big slate mine in the Lake District. It kind of sits in the high mountains here. Let's see if we can get down onto a street view. Yeah, looks like we can join the road here. So it's kind of cut away. Obviously, the Lake District is kind of known for its slate. And it has um, all these kind of slate roads that run up into the side of the mountains here. Very kind of harsh cliffs, right? So let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing kind of a National Park ore build. Because we may be able to factor that in to Baguzia as well. So many ideas, this little slate globe that they have, so cool. Uh, yeah, so the slate mines kind of run all the way through this thing. So let me know what you think in the comments, and uh, we might be able to put this together sometime. Okay, so we're back. Sorry about that little uh, detour, but I really wanted to show that off. Uh, so perhaps like a park info booth, maybe... Um, could actually squeeze a plaza in here. I think this would look a little weird though if it's not mirrored. So maybe a cafe. Maybe a cafe right here. Although maybe we kind of face this up along the main road. Maybe duplicate these. So it's like a little dual cafe. Like that. And then should we bring the path behind it? I wonder. Kind of box it in nicely. So with these areas, we want them to obviously have a very specific feel, so you just keep placing and then you know, taking a look from a distance, how's it looking from the shoreline. Now, I think these kind of dual side cafes work really nicely. And hopefully now you can see, as we begin to place things around this fountain, you can tell that it isn't quite centred, but it still looks good. So it looks like I've left just slightly not enough room between the key and the road, but that is fine. Let's kind of run. Can we get a bigger rock in here? No, they're a little too big, aren't they? So what we'll do is we'll place in some kind of smaller ones here. We'll grab some small bushes. And then just kind of feature them around this little rock here. Maybe one of the smaller trees as well. Like maybe one of these, the little sugar maples. How does that look? Yeah, okay, and then maybe a little part life fence that, um, like one of these little signposts that just kind of tell you where things are. So, you know, you arrive at this little signpost here, you're like, oh my god, this lake front is so beautiful. And, uh, you know, you don't know what to do first. Maybe, you know, there's uh, there's cafes over here or the casinos down there. Not that you wouldn't be able to tell anyway, <laughs> it's so big. But, uh, you know, it's, a, it's kind of a happy accident that I didn't leave enough room between the keys and the road. But it's a nice little opportunity to get some very micro detail in there just to fill the empty space where the paths end with one another. And, you know, they can literally cross here and then right onto the next one if they want to as well. So it's not really an issue, I don't think. So we'll look at decorating the front of the ferry stop here. And I think we'll have just a little restroom and some commercial out the side. And I think that'll be okay. Do some nice trees around here as well. Let's see what kind of trees will work nicely. 
Grab some of the palms, maybe. Obviously, they look a little bit dead right now, but the grass here uh, will eventually regrow. And then um, they'll kind of come back to life a little bit more. Got some of those rocks in here as well. It's just to fill out little areas like this. It's doing the very tiny details kind of on this scale that will really just help you bring your city to life a little bit more. Maybe one of those big bushes as well. Let me squeeze one of those in here. And let's have a can, but it'll be dead until the grass grows, so that's fine. Place a couple of these in too. Okay, so the first commercials are coming in now. Excellent news. So I really want to be careful with how this area develops because like I said you know when you're working with kind of different specializations uh, they can become very ugly very quickly so it's important that we keep our eye on it perfect opportunity to put a path through there it's slightly on an angle but we should be able to cope with that I think uh, and then let's have some more I kind of feel like I want another road in here How about if we come out like that, and then big commercial block right there, and then we can bring the amusement park path down again, and then we've got a little more room for commercial in here as well. Let's get a 4x3 in. Maybe one here as well, a little 3x3. Three three. Are you a commercial building? No, oh, yeah. Kind of looks weird with this little side thing on it. I guess that's the Bowen Alley. Okay, we're all starting to generate a really nice atmosphere around this place right now. So we're beginning to see this quite tight, intricate road network beginning to form. Well, it's not really intricate, I suppose. It's quite basic, but I think it looks nice. Slowly growing together. We have some zone tiles here that I'll fill out shortly. This fountain is starting to look really nice as well. And I think it serves as quite a nice introduction to the area. So I'm really liking the way this corner's looking here. There's paths and commercial, so I definitely want that same feeling on this side too. Okay, so we've got a little bit of uh, residential demanding right now. I'm starting to get some complaints that these guys don't have enough workers. And I wonder actually, do we make these high density residential and historical the buildings? Because I'm thinking of one of the high density residential assets kind of looks like a little beach house uh, i'll show you guys what i'm talking about i'm pretty sure there's some along the beach here yeah so it's it's kind of these assets right here so we made all these historical these kind of look like really nice beachfront houses or like beachfront apartments and in bowness there is a lot of apartments as well so i think we will go for the apartment vibe Kind of some of these buildings over here. Yeah, I think we will do that. So let's begin to plan them out. So we want obviously very specific 4 by 4 zonings here. And uh, we'll keep our eye on it as it grows. And uh, we do need to actually hook these guys in to the rest of the road network. Let's bring it through here. And then we can have a couple more of these that should probably be a good point to start it from. Guess we'll kind of have to wait and see. Okay, so I've just kind of terraformed the front of these houses right here. And uh, yeah, these are the assets we want right here. So I think we will have kind of a very rich, low density. Do I want this one in? This one's a little bit manky. Look, I don't think we do want them in. So we'll kind of pick and choose the assets that we want here. I'm happy with this one. So we're now starting to see this like tiered theme develop, right? Nah. This should look quite nice as it begins to grow. Alright, so I've uh, introduced a little one-way flow system here. We were trying to get some people crossing over one another. Uh, so the one-way system is just going to make sure that they keep floating around. Which is going to be fantastic news. Uh, so let's begin to kind of map out this little bit of kind of area front that we want over here. So I do want to save a bit of room for like some very small parkland. So make sure we've got some more zone tiles here. And then this bit here between uh, the residences and the resi 
and the uh, the commercial areas will begin to kind of move into some kind of parkland. So we can delete this one right here. And again, we have this really nice corner. So more commercial in here. Right up along here as well. And then we can have some more amusement park paths through here as well. So I'm obviously going with the amusement park path here because it kind of looks the most touristy, I guess. It's got the palm trees on it. And again, we can probably squeeze in maybe a little restroom here too. Don't want to destroy the zone in there. Yeah, okay, we're good. We're good for right there. So we'll check on the housing. Yeah, we don't want those ones. They can disappear. I got some bit of a, a weird tile there as well. One right there. One there as well. Also, these actually a little uneven, aren't they? That's fine. Doesn't have to be kind of super, super parallel with one another. And then we'll begin to kind of plot some in here as well. Maybe we go for elevated zoo paths instead. <laughs> Surprise, surprise. Um, let's have a little look at that. So we'll grab, we'll use the amusement park path for the kind of the initial decoration, right? So we'll come up by three steps on the lowest incline. I think this will be quite a nice introduction into the area as well. And then we'll come down by 102. It's usually kind of my best benchmark and then how is the transition if we switch back in to palm tree here I don't think it's too bad it's not something I usually do to kind of switch path, uh, path types kind of like this but I guess we'll kind of see how it plays out yeah so we're getting quite a nice view I do like the way it kind of slopes down like this now let's have a little look at what else we're getting in for the residentials Let's, uh, is that the one we wanted to delete? I think we'll keep that one. That one looks okay as well. I can't remember if that was the asset we wanted to keep. Either way, I think it'd be nice to have a little kind of mix and match in here as well. Alright guys, so things have taken a development. Just carried on expanding this residential up here. Added in a nice little curved elevated zoo path. Which is uh, getting a little bit of use. I think once kind of more things develop around it, we'll see more people uh, coming up and down it. Added some more roads in here. Uh, added a final road over here and also hooked people into the train station right on this road. We do have a double rail crossing. However, the trains are so infrequent on these two lines. Um, in fact, I think one of the lines is actually dead now. I think this one doesn't even work anymore. This was the old cargo line. Uh, but yeah, this really isn't usually a smart thing to do, but because the trains are so infrequent, it doesn't really matter. Uh, they're kind of crossing without any problems anyway. Uh, lots of people using this path to get back into from the area, uh, so we'll definitely kind of need to flash this out, maybe with some suburb, some kind of low density stuff around here to kind of bring the town, uh, you know, a little more different kind of zonings and stuff. We're getting some of the odd messages, you know, not enough customers. It's just because there's been such a massive influx of uh, new commercial areas. It's always expected. Uh, but, you know, like the old area we did last episode, once it's been here for a little while and stabilised, uh, we'll begin to kind of see uh, everything come together. Uh, so we'll come back to the waterfront for a little bit, and I think we're going to push it down just a touch more because it's kind of a very short waterfront along here. So I think we'll kind of expand it a little bit to the right of the, the ferry stop as well. And I guess we'll just kind of plan something out here so I think we're gonna drop in some of the healthcare stuff let's give these guys a fire station uh, I guess we can plot this up on the main road right here uh, we'll definitely have a police station for this place because obviously you know it's uh it's kind of wild and free there's lots of uh, rowdy nightlife ride uh, rowdy nightlife here so uh, we'll give them a police station and also just box that off with uh, a amusement park path as well. It's a nice little corner building. Uh, this is an asset we don't want in. Let's get rid of that one. I got some garbage collection issues here as well, but uh, we'll need to supply uh, some kind of garbage processing for this area because I don't think they have one immediately nearby. 
Uh, see how many people are choosing to drive on this road right now. Let's make sure we turn off the traffic light here. Uh, everyone can just flow as they need to. Might even need a roundabout here to kind of facilitate the flow. Well, we'll keep our eye on that, but there is a ton of people kind of walking up and down here. Path's getting lots of use. Unfortunately, no one's using the elevated zoo path, but... You know, it's fine. M maybe one day. We'll probably end up deleting it, to be honest. Uh, okay, so let's have a little discussion about this area right here. So we'll bring the road to a close here and then we'll probably break this pattern because we don't want to carry on this pattern all the way down you know it's nice to it's nice to change things up so we'll bring our zoo paths through the middle again probably right about here and then this one is very easily snapped to the grid okay that was a little bit weird the way it did that but that's fine uh, this zone in here is very strange I don't know what this building is doing Okay, so let's transition into something uh, something of a different pattern, anyway. Okay, so what I'm thinking is, if we have... I kind of want the buildings to be facing into a path, right? So let's see if we can kind of formulate this idea. So if we come out from the middle here... So I want these buildings to be on this side of the road. I actually wonder if we kill this connection right here instead. And then we can delete these. Now, things are subject to change. And then let's have a bank of commercial there. And then one right here. think that should be okay. So then we'll take this away. And then what we can do is we can measure that road. So if we come up 900, so 450 is going to be the halfway point. That's halfway right there. Okay. So if we come down about here. I want to make sure we save room for this path to continue along the shoreline as well. So we'll have that one through there. And the distance between that corner and that corner is 250. So there. Okay, so we can delete this halfway marker now. We know that the middle point is halfway. And I want to kind of create something of like an impressive walk down here. So we're at distances of 1300. So I think we can box it off there. We'll kind of see how that develops. We have some serious garbage problems right now um, in this part of the town. Where is, do these guys not have anything nearby? Alright, so just doing a bunch of recycling centres uh, alongside the highway. Ooh, look at this. This is an issue. Let's see if we can turn off the traffic lights here. Yeah, this area is definitely going to need some roundabouts, I think. Just to help people flow this new area is attracting so many new sims. That uh, we are experiencing some issues, so maybe a roundabout here would be ideal. Just to help people flow a little better, but uh, we'll worry about that towards the end of the episode. Tons of people using the path as well, which is uh, good. Okay, so with this space right here, do we want a park asset within this thing? Let's get the path in first. So we'll have the path run all the way through the middle. And then I want the commercial facing into this thing. So we kind of have a bit of a road like this. So we should be able to do some pretty nice things with this. Let's go ahead and throw in a park cafe either side. These are nice little 2x4 assets you can use to fill at relatively awkward spaces. And then how about if we come out kind of towards the middle there. Okay, and then we can detail this up as well. So I think this will serve as kind of a nice little central plaza almost. People walking through the middle of this thing. And then as we approach here, so this is the actual national park itself. Soften this terrain out here. And then we'll create another road connection to enter the national park. So the national park itself actually has um, a toll gate on it. So we're going to want to make sure we include another toll gate here as well. 
So we'll go with the two way small and I think we'll actually bring this back just a touch as well. There we go. And then we can hook in a two way highway. So I'm thinking with kind of the oil industry, we might place the ore, uh, the, the ore, might place it along here, this kind of little peninsula that just sticks out. I think it'd be really nice as well to kind of see it from this uh, kind of big industrial looking rail line. With the ferries flowing past it as well. This might be a really good place to get some some ore industry in. We do have the resource here. So let me uh, don't forget to let me know what you guys think of that idea. Really happy with this uh, fantastic fountain kind of as the entry point. And you got all these little kind of surrounded with this leisure commercial. Makes it look really good. A little paths running off in different directions as well. Like this little like that's like thumbnail material right there, you know. <laughs> Maybe squeeze the elevated zoo path in as well. These guys have also got a pretty impressive view over to uh, the dam over there. The big highway bridges. See the observatory from down here too. Can we see the mountainside town? Yeah, there's the Statue of Industry right there. But otherwise these guys are pretty secluded. You can't really... Lots of lush mountains around them. It's a nice little spot. Alright, so I'm fairly happy with how things are developing within kind of the tourism centre here. But what I want to start doing now is start providing a little bit of a surrounding suburb. I kind of within these spaces here, I've just terraformed a little more just so we have some nice flat land to work with. Though we now have a kind of sunken power lines and <laughs> these are these are dangerously low to the ground. So we'll have to remove them, but that'll be fine. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, begin to add in a little bit of a suburb around here, I think. So again, I want to kind of make sure that we have our snapping on initially and we're just going to find a road guideline to work to. Making sure that we can get some 4x4s in here as well. Uh, we did have, actually have a comment last episode, uh, someone asking, oh well, suggesting that I use the uh, electric roads mod. Um, which we may do, just because I wish we had some kind of like small town power line, you know. Like little power poles rather than having to use the big major pylons kind of everywhere in the city. Okay, so we have a nice little curve road that comes in like that. Maybe that could be a nice different angle. Kind of breaks the zone in tiles, but it's a different shape, right? And then bring one in there as well. Uh, do we want anything in here? I think we'll kind of save this for some kind of part. And I do like the way this kind of road's sunken up alongside these little hills here. That's a nice different bit of terrain variation, I think. Uh, okay. And then again, with this space right here, I think we'll take this path out and redraw it in so it's a little more impressive. We'll take this med clinic out as well. And then just begin to kind of push this tariff. So again, we know we're sticking to that tiered system here. Uh, there's kind of a lot of different layers to this thing. And then we'll begin to kind of end that idea as we approach the kind of the smaller national park time right here. It's kind of soften some of these areas out. Need to remove a lot of these rocks as well. So this is where the previous path was flowing. So I wonder if we actually kind of keep this as an elevated walkway that runs all the way through this little suburb here. Strange, there's some there seems to be something that interferes with the Elevation step tool. I think it's the better landscaping mod that does it. Uh, what's the descent here? 142. So it should be that distance right there. And then we can come in from that angle. Now I wonder, do we want to run an elevated path through the suburb? I've never tried this before. I guess we'll try it today. We'll kind of see how it looks. Uh, and then again, we'll we'll kind of keep that descent roughly to the same. Yeah, that should be okay. We can put some nice rocks around this entrance so the slope isn't too harsh. But it'll be kind of interesting to see kind of an elevated path running through a suburb. It's a, it's a very different design. I'll, I'll, I'll give it that. Okay, let's begin to get some uh, suburbs in here and then we'll begin to move towards the detail and end of the episode. 
So I think actually what we'll do here is the old Imperial Jedi detailing technique. So let's actually go ahead and get in the Nature Reserve path. Now considering we are in the Nature Reserve path here, we haven't... Um, well, because we are actually in the Nature Reserve, rather. We haven't actually used uh, too many of the Nature Reserve paths for once. So we'll come through like that. Let's break this bridge just so we can come through the middle. And I guess he can just run all the way down, right? Yeah, okay. Then we'll grab our elevated zoo path again. And then we'll just come across like that. So it's getting a ton of use. A very popular path. People choosing to walk to the train station. I definitely still think we want a bus line though to feed people down from the ferry to the bus. That would be um, a good idea, linking those two transport networks together. Now let's make sure that we have water. I'm at the point in the map now where I don't care about the water network. <laughs> Just spam them until you fill it out. Uh, money really isn't an issue at this point. So this is a really great design for kind of those those small town vibes that you might be trying to go for. That uh, you'll 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 achieve a lot with this. I love how busy this elevated zoo path is. This makes me tremendously happy <laughs> to see people using the zoo paths in this fashion. Okay, so uh, let's get this suburb finished. So we'll come in a big block like this. Let's take out those zonings. And uh, probably the ones up against the road as well. Okay, and then what we do is there's a number of different fences you can use. Um, let's kind of have a look at some of them. So the park fence wouldn't really work. I'm thinking even nature reserve. That would be the most appropriate. There's forestry as well. Farm would work nicely. The farm is very similar to the forestry, actually. It's kind of a more properly built version of that. A sheet metal fence. That could work for some kind of like inner city suburb detail, and I think. And obviously the, we don't want the oil, so I think I'm going to run with the farming fence. I think it's going to be the best option here. Or the forestry. Which one is it? Forestry. It's kind of got that nice back garden detail on it, right? Yeah, okay. So it's coming from here. We'll come up as close to the angle as we want. Make sure we'll just snap into the angle and make things a lot easier down the road. And we want to come in. Super. And then we're going to save three deep tilings like this. So obviously things will begin to build. Just cut them away. And then you'll begin to kind of generate those those 3 by 3 tilings. So anyway guys, that's going to feel like a good point to go ahead and jump into the old detailing time lapse. And then uh, we'll begin to kind of tidy up the rest of these areas. And then uh, see what we end up with towards the end. So we'll be right back.
All right, guys, that is going to do it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, a like below is always appreciated equally as much. If you didn't enjoy it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. Uh, this area is certainly on its way to becoming what I had in mind, and um, there's definitely some more spaces to fill, as you can kind of see from this aerial shot. And uh, we'll definitely come back and add to this uh, when we do the kind of countryside or episode, which I think we are going to do, but let me know what you guys think of that as well. Lots of really nice detail and ideas as well with some rock as we kind of enter uh, the nightlife town. And uh, the little kind of rural suburb is beginning to develop around the train station as well. So, really nice little town. Super happy with it. I hope you guys are as well. But otherwise, that is enough from me. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.